right. Good morning, everybody. 9.23 a.m. Central Time this morning on our Farming Country 790K Triple X. I have Senator Jerry Moran on the line with me. Thank you, Senator, for taking some time out this morning to talk to all of us. Good morning to you, Madison. Great to be with you. It's great to be with you again. And we're just going to talk a little bit here. Uh, anyone who's been paying attention to the news, got a news update on their phone last night like I did. There are some some tensions rising uh, across the world and across the country right now. Can you just share a little bit about your thoughts about this situation that's going on currently in the Russia and Ukraine uh, area? Madison, I, I would start my comments by condemning Vladimir Putin, condemning Russia. There is no justification uh, for uh, this invasion of an independent country. Russia agreed that Ukraine was an, uh, an independent nation. Uh, as the Soviet Union fell apart, uh, there was a recognition of Ukraine as an independent country that uh, was worthy of its borders being uh, protected. And uh, so there is no justification there's no uh nobleness there's no reason except for the desire for power by putin and russia in this instance and i i would say that uh we have a lot at stake as as the united states in this regard uh and this is the most significant invasion of of an independent nation in europe since world war ii we've only seen this perhaps one other time since world war ii with saddam hussein and the United States and NATO need to work together, need to be unified, and make certain that there is a price to be paid. I'm not suggesting that we should send uh, troops, uh, military men and women, to the Ukraine or to Russia. We need to reassure our NATO allies. NATO, all the NATO countries have agreed to, to respond when, when a NATO country is attacked. Uh, and. Ukraine is not a NATO country, and it's hardly a democracy. It's a struggling country. But if Russia is willing to invade Ukraine, what might be next? And what will other countries see about the American resolve, NATO's uh, worthiness, uh, as they can contemplate what they might do in their neighborhood or to the United States? So this is an important point in time. It's a time for Americans to, to work together to make certain our response is appropriate and adequate to try to get Russia out of Ukraine and to try to make certain that other nations and Russia doesn't see this as an opportunity to proceed elsewhere or further. So, uh, and, and I would use this, uh, I mean, Ukraine has a consequence here. We've already seen what's happened in wheat markets. Uh, Ukraine is the breadbasket of the former Soviet Union. It's the place where wheat is grown in the Russian neighborhood. Uh, and we also see what's happening with uh, energy prices. It would be the place that I'm going to continue to criticize uh, and encourage the Biden administration to change their policies. We need a, we need a country that is energy independent, uh, and we ought to be pursuing all of the options we have to provide energy for ourselves and the world uh, and to help uh, Europe as uh, Russia may. Russia's uh, source of income is, is oil and natural gas. And in fact, the United States, the United Kingdom, and the European Union will, just in the next 24 hours, uh, buy 3.5 million barrels of Russian oil and pay Russia $330 million doing so. Uh, we are funding their aggression. We are funding our adversary, our enemy. And our policy needs to be to encourage uh, oil and gas and wind energy and ethanol and all of the above, solar energy. Uh, to help meet our, our country and the world's energy needs. And the Biden administration has been on a path since its uh, arrival of trying to eliminate fossil fuels. So what can you say that um, the American people should expect in the next upcoming days, upcoming weeks, as the situation continu continues? Well, so far, sanctions have been, imp are, are, have been and are being imposed. Congress is, is uh, legislating additional sanctions, uh, attempting to demonstrate the Putin and the world that Republicans and Democrats in the, in the United States Senate and House are supportive of uh, pushing back on Russia. Uh, and uh, I'm a member of the Defense Appropriations Committee. One of the things we've assured, uh, somewhat to, contrary to the president's original budget plan, that there be sufficient increases in defense spending. Uh, the attack on Ukraine is a pretty good example of why we need to make certain that's the case. And so Congress will be completing its appropriation process, including funding defense, 
in the next several weeks. Um, we, we will have the opportunity to see how these sanctions are working and what next steps should be taken. And I assume that Russia thought they were going to divide the United States and NATO countries. And so far, pleasing to me is that it seems that the NATO, the European uh, and North American countries, are pretty solid in their response to uh, this invasion. I would say that this is going to be one of those times that I think we're going to try to catch up with you a little bit more, um, more periodically as this continues to arise and the more we learn um, as these continue as the the situation does continue but kind of segueing that, that, away from that, that can continuing to speak with you a little bit more you are going to actually be back home in kansas in our area are you not that is true assuming not called back to uh, washington dc in the next day or two uh today i'm uh and today and tomorrow thursday and friday i'm in northwest kansas i'm in uh decatur county rollins county thomas county uh, Logan, I'm trying to think I don't miss one, uh, Sheridan and Wallace. And it is, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, wanting to stay in touch more frequently in today's uh, circumstances, today's world. Uh, it really is useful for me, not only to explain my views to Kansans, but to be out uh, among folks here in the home part of my state, uh, listening to what they have to say and getting reaction to what I'm, what I might say to them. And that communication is hugely important as I evaluate what makes sense. We may think that there's some, you know, wisdom in Washington D.C. And I'm a, I'm an, I have the ability for classified briefings, and I, I have the opportunity to learn a lot of things. But there's no place like home for just getting a dose of good common sense. Yeah, and we appreciate you being able to come back home as frequently as you do and being able to communicate and uh, actually talk with us still out here, being able to listen and bring all of our views back to Washington. It's the best part of my job. If you maybe live in Washington, D.C. seven days a week, I, I don't I think I'd easily uh, decide there was uh, somebody else could do this job. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much. But like I said, I really hope that we can continue to stay in close contact. I'm excited to be able to speak with you here later as you are making your trip back home. Um, and I know that with everything going on right now, everyone's tensions are kind of high. But on a positive note, there is a lot of good still going on in the world. And a lot of that is happening right there in high schools by the kids who are wearing that blue and yellow they are still able to go out and show everyone what they can do it is national ffa week and i know that that pretty much or kind of holds a special place in your heart so you can you just tell me a little bit about why ffa is so important and kind of what it means to you well congress has passed a resolution i i sponsored and i know congress uh, man was very engaged in creating an ffa caucus in the house of representatives but I'm always honored. It's just such a privilege to, to stand next to a student, a boy or a girl, in a blue jacket, corduroy jacket, and know what that means. You know, a lot of what matters to us in the places that I'm going to be visiting is what happens to our children, what happens to our kids. And the future of our communities in Kansas depends upon that next generation. And FFA is a way that we can not only educate students in uh, in, in, in things that we learn in a book, but also things that are important in life about character and values. And um, it's, a, it's a path by which we can keep more young men and women engaged in agriculture, maybe on the farm or the ranch, maybe in agribusiness. Uh, and it's the way that we will, well, during my visit, uh, I will be in, uh, in one high school, a tech college, and a community college. And the things that go on in those three kinds of settings is what determines whether or not the communities that we all call home have a future. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think FFA is greatly important. If you have been on social media, I'm sure you have seen a uh, post by a high school student who is recognizing that they already know what FFA can do for them. And I'm just excited to see just how much more it can do for them in the future. But I do want to say thank you, uh, Senator Moran, for talking to us this morning. Like I said, I will hopefully be in contact on keeping up with you uh, as we continue on through the Russia-Ukraine situation. And Great to be with you and KXX. I hope our paths cross. I actually was hoping, I mean, I'm anxious to come to Northwest Kansas, but I wouldn't have been disappointed had there been a foot of 
heavy, wet snow that prevented me from getting there. Yes, I think everyone here would agree with that, that we are in some dire need of some good precipitation. Appreciate you. Thank you so much.